What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Third Person. My name is Chris. This is Mike. Yes, it is. What's going on? And as you can see, we have a we have a third person with yes, us. Yes, we do. And it's the one and only John Bruno, visual effects supervisor for Nosferatu and many other things that we'll get into. Uh, welcome, John. Thank you. Thanks for inviting me. Absolutely. Thank you so much. We, re we really appreciate you coming by, especially for Nosferatu. This was a show that Mike and I were really excited to see. And, you know, and we went through the season and, and, and we've had nothing but wonderful things to say about it throughout the season. It's, it's a really it's a really fantastic and special show. Yeah. Uh, so having you here to talk about some of the things that we were essentially marveling at throughout exactly. the show is, exactly. is, is really great. So um, before we uh, get into any questions, so visual effects supervisor, to my understanding, is basically your job is to plan and facilitate the on-set and in-camera effects for anything you're working on. Is that a good way to kind of sum it up? Uh, yeah, I mean, you work, uh, you know, through my career, I've always worked closely with the uh, uh, art department, art director. I mean, I started out as uh, an illustrator, so uh, I was an art, a visual effects art director. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so I worked with closely with production, you know, first unit production, and then uh, the DP, uh, along with the with the director. But in in TV, you're sort of on before the directors get there. Right. And so you design and try to facilitate like what's the best way to get this done, and then get it done. Uh, a design a shot or design a shot that's going to be continuous, like the bridge, uh, that will run over all ten shows. Yeah. And uh, and that's the very first thing we we talked about, you know, like building it full size. But for me, yeah. uh, in, in 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 movies, in features that I've done, everything you try to do everything in camera, mm -hmm. and then what you can't do in camera, then it becomes a visual effect. Right. So that's my approach to everything, including including this show. Yeah. Um. Uh. And the, the and it was it's interesting because the only other, sh other television I've done was uh, I directed Star Trek Voyager back in right. the day. So, and, and that, they're the same thing. You know, it's all it's pr as much as practical as you can get it. Yeah. So um, anyway, this, this was an inter interesting trip for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, how did you get involved with Nosferatu? Yeah. Let's, let's, let's go there. What was, what was that like, getting involved? Well, uh, this will be a little – this will be odd. Uh, <laughs> A very good friend of mine, Terry Wendell, was assigned this show, and uh, and he uh, basically had a heart attack, oh. and and so I don't know how weird this will sound to your audience, but but you know we call I, he called me and said, look, I don't I got to start this in a month. You think you could you know help me out? And it started like that. It started yeah. like, well, I'll tell you what, I'll prep the show for you. Uh, but they probably won't agree to that. But in fact, they did. Yeah. And then, and he died. Oh, oh my so God. sorry to wow. hear that. Oh, so no. I have to mention, you know, Terry, my, wow. my buddy for, for a long, long time. Yeah. Oh, geez. And, and um, I started the show, and, and, and it was weird because I probably would have never been considered for the show. Right. Wow. And uh, when I got there, I thought, this, you know, this, this book is great the scripts are great the everybody around is great yeah uh, it was it was good on one level because they said they knew they knew me they knew my work and that sort of went very smoothly because of that it's like I, I came on I wasn't really there was no arguing about stuff other than you know cost it's always cost yeah right yeah but example the bridge you know it kept coming up with, you build a full-size bridge it's in camera then you have no then all your it, 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 you're fixing, you're, you're adding to or extending. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so a full-size bridge, bridge interior was built, and we took the. Uh, this is all worked out with the art department, yeah. Product designer uh, Andrew, and the the very front of the bridge was a movable section. Yeah. So that could be moved to Anywhere. where she enters yeah. and then yeah. where she exits, and we went all over Rhode Island and. You move that, and this is here, Iowa. This is, uh, you know, uh, Gun Barrel, uh, mm -hmm. Colorado. Yeah. And that, that section of bridge would be placed. And then 
you would have a dimensional object lit by whatever the lighting is. It could be raining, snowing, yeah. uh, bright sun. And you could do a camera move, and you can always keep it composed and know, know where the bridge is yeah. compositionally. And then we would have to extend the exterior of the bridge and the interior of the bridge. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> no, I mean, it was, yeah, it was, that, that's the one thing that we always said about this show. Mm -hmm. It was, it just, it just looked real, yeah. you know, and, and yeah. anything that was done digitally was just to enhance. And, and that was the beauty of it. And obviously on camera, it absolutely shows, but like, yeah, the, the first time that she traveled and she went to say like the diner to find the watch and yeah. it was there. And the guy looks up, he's like, what the hell? And, and <laughs> we're, we're watching it going, that's the real, what they yeah. just put the whole bridge right there you can yeah. see it's a real bridge exactly. and that's fantastic that's and to know that it was like 130 feet long yeah you know it, well the full size one yeah the full size but we one. extended that yeah yeah which we doubled we we it was two uh, you know in the book it says it's 350 feet yeah and i kind of did some tests i did a few tests and like 200 feet 500 feet and it looked totally ridiculous past 200 feet. Really? Oh, wow. And uh, so we extended it, and, and, and the point of it is to make it creak, creak, uh, you know, rickety and mm -hmm. falling apart from time to time. So one, one you know, digital extension interior was made, and, 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 and then there was a lot of things on how, how to get it to be, uh, you know, what, what happens inside. Does she, because it's a time portal. Right, yeah. And does she sort of vaporize and come out? And the, there, there's all this discussion. And then uh, Joe Hill showed up when we were we were doing the Here Iowa sequence, right, yeah. and he started talking about poltergeist. And went, poltergeist. Yeah. He's a big fan of poltergeist, yes. which is a movie. I worked on two poltergeist movies. Oh yeah, we know. Yep. Yeah. And and uh, he goes, yeah, it's like the TV screen, all that you know, static. I went, really? Just that's it? But that was hard to do. Oh yeah. Mm. <laughs> In this scenario, yeah. and try to make it through beams of light, you know. So there was a lot of discussion, and we and we built up over the first two or three shows. It it, it kept changing and and, and expanding and re reducing. It was, and then how much did we see the other side? You know, it's like, well, we should see the other side. So if it's night, if, if she's leaving in the dark, it's 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 bright enough on the other side that you see the end. Right. But I argued to put in. And you should see the image of what's that. You shouldn't just blow it out. It shouldn't just be white. Yeah. yeah. You could see where you were going, and there was an image on the other side, and there was a balance to that, and that yeah. was all compositing. But, um, and if if you notice, uh, when the section of bridge was there, we never really, because every time we went off to the side, mm -hmm. we'd have to deal with where did it go? R yeah, yeah, or right, what whatever you said. Yeah. Yeah, so we kind of framed sense. it so it was always on the when we we're on the edge of the bridge seeing inside mm -hmm. it could be a live shot yeah or you can get around it was 10 i think it was 18 feet tall uh 10 feet wide 10 feet deep okay and the rest was um and and as long as you were you were lined up and didn't see the edge of it it was a it you could just shoot it live. Yeah, that's wow. great. Same thing with the interior. When you got in the interior, if you got back past 10 feet, you had to extend it, which we did. Yeah. And you can't tell. I mean, it's photo real. Yeah. Um, but, uh, and the, but and then the biggest challenge for the bridge was, wait a minute, she has to ride a motorcycle in there at speed. So I extended, I worked out with the stunt coordinator. We extended 25 feet mm -hmm. of a platform and put a tent on it. Okay. And um, so she could actually, the stunt rider could yeah. ride, get into second gear, yeah, and then yeah. slam on the brakes when she got in. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Stopped. And then she could reverse coming out. She came out at 20 miles an hour. So that was, you know, this the visual effects to me is physics. Mm -hmm. you, know, you have to be able to, if, if you look at a shot of an airplane flying or banking or turning and it doesn't look real, it doesn't look real because of the physics. Right. So... Uh, if you don't notice it, uh, you, you've done it. You did a good job. Exactly. So it's, it's really hard to to mimic that, since it was done practically. Um, you know, it's real. So yeah. <laughs> and it, it's, no, it's fantastic. Yeah, fantastic. no, it's great. Yeah. It was you know, especially with the bats and everything chirping when she's always, always adds there was, that. There's a whole yeah. That, that, 
while to the layering of how many bats do we see, when do we mm-hmm. see, mm-hmm. and then you know Jamie O'Brien, the showrunner, was always like, remember every time that we see a bat, she's losing part of her mind. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. A little insight there. Yeah. All right. So, so let's talk about something else that you've created for the show. Some of the uh, the spookiest, creepiest uh, imagery that we've seen on the show so far is Christmas Land, and what went into creating. Um, Christmas land and, and the gate and uh, what was involved um, with that that last scene in, in the last episode of the mountains and, and the carnival rides and Chris, Christmas land we didn't uh, there was a number of sketches uh, and paintings uh, uh, Andrew uh, our our production designer was you know we we were completely on board as far as the, or, or, or in sync of it has to be full size yeah as much as we can do and at least we knew that the gate would be full size and then it was how much of the gate do we build do we build 50 feet 100 feet mm-hmm. and we got to put it somewhere and then what's behind the gate exactly and that, was, <laughs> that that was 4 months of yeah uh, not knowing what it was, um, uh, but we knew we we, we did shoot. Uh, we had to shoot it up uh, early on, so we, sh- we we put a lot of Christmas trees. We shot it at night when that's when uh, I think Haley, Haley shows up to the gate and goes inside and gets her little pair of scissors. Yeah, yeah. Um, and and uh, so there was that was sort of practical, and, and we we never knew what was past the tr- the Christmas trees. Other than illustrations, yeah, and and we never so we put a little house there called the we call it the Weedy House. It's it's a little red house um, that was a uh, that was built to to block any view behind. And then, right. so when we finally got to okay, now we have to see what's in there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we finally found a location. It was literally across the street from the studio, and that was the last thing we did. Oh, wow. uh, it was in a big field. Um, it was a full size. There's full size uh, carnival rides. There was Ferris wheel and all this full size. Wow! And then a, a a really large green screen which we had made, which was I think it was sixty by eighty, and that wasn't big enough. Oh. <laughs> and we finally did it, and. Um, uh, so it, we basically shot the elements we built. There was a lot of these little, odd little gnome houses that yeah. we built by our department, uh, and we kind of never we, we kind of never established that he was seeing him drive through it. Like there's an illustration in the in the graphic novel. You, you can see where you have to go. Yeah, we just sort of jump to those places. Yeah, uh, but it was full size, and uh, and it took. Uh, uh, Cosa did it, uh, a visual effects company, and and we kept adding to it. We had some illustrators come in and do it, and then that would change, and then it just sort of ended up where everybody sort of one day went, oh, that's cool. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, we did like the fact that there was a the, the big thing was the roller coaster. There's a roller coaster. Yeah. And the roller coaster had to fit in on both sides of the the the, the, the entry the entrance way. And uh, so that's the old school wooden roller coaster mm-hmm. wow. that went off into these mountains. And the mountains were um, these sort of sawtooth mountains that, that are in Italy, uh, what are they call the, the Dolomites, um, that uh, we just kept finding a layer of haze that you'd see them, not see them, and, how, and, these, and they're supposed to be thousands of children because he'd been doing this for a hundred years. Right? Yeah, right. right. Uh, Charlie Banks putting children in there, and so these little villages. So if you ever can stop and go through it, it's layer after layer. Oh yeah, it took. It, took, it was the very last thing we did. I mean, finally at the very end of the production, mm-hmm. uh, we were finished shooting. But I mean, at the end of uh, editing, we find the last shots finally came in. I mean, we had. I think it was the last month. Wow. We, we were tweaking all all the time, tweaking, tweaking, tweaking. How many lights? How many just? Yeah. Is this you know? Do we like this? I don't know. Is anybody gonna like this? <laughs> uh, what was good for me uh, was that uh, Joe Hill really really liked it. So yeah. Uh, 
That's all good. Well, as the viewer, it looked it looked phenomenal. Yeah, that must have been yeah. cool for 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 Joe actually, to, you know, to, as well to see his his book come to his life. creation yeah. come not only from words but from yeah. graphics to an actual set and and visual stuff. Yeah, it was it was pretty creepy and it was it was pretty wonderful, especially his face in the moon, yeah, Max's face which in the we've moon. seen a couple times uh, now during during the show. And then uh, yeah, the the first the first time we did the moon, it was a test. Yeah. And it's like, well, here's a test. What do you think of this? And because we, we had him on, we had uh, uh, Zach Quinto on stage and on, on a makeup member three or four, I can't remember. Yeah. Uh, and while we we're shooting something, we we're shooting a test of him, and I went, oh, let's shoot an angle on the side. Maybe we can, maybe I see if I can make the moon out of it. Yeah. And I sent it, sent it to the effects facility, or went through, and then uh, next thing I know, here it is. You know, and people. Kind of, well, we kind of like that. Yeah. But there's still more to do. I don't know. Let's, and it started, it, it changes throughout. Yeah. But, but, but uh, Joe Hill, of course, again, like that. So, but I tried to, I tried to push everybody to the, um, to the, the graphic novel. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, it was a good base. It was a, right. It was probably as, a good way. As the base, a nice the, the starting base. point. Yeah, that's great. That's actually really great to have that. Yeah. And I then mean, try to make it the moon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, it, th this show. I mean, obviously, this. You know, from everything we've we've just spoken about just now, even it's it's there's no shortage of wonderful, um, creepy and imaginative things to look at. And one of those was Maggie's Scrabble Bag, which I I. I, I gotta know how how did that happen? Was it all? Was it was it digital? Was it practical? Practical. Wow. How how did? Uh, well, that just again, I was approaching everything as practical. Yeah. And and that's uh, amazing. Like, how do we do this practical? Do I do we put her arm in a green sleeve? And it's like, well, then we have to paint her arm back. Right. And so I try right. To these ways. And the simplest way was to cut the bottom of the bag out. Oh, hold on. I have the bag you in have my the bag? bag in my, can I, can, Go get it, it. yeah. Can I just step out? Sure, fine. Five seconds. No problem, no problem. All right, oh, well, look at that. Wow. The bag. That's so cool. <laughs> one, of, one, of, one of the bags, and here's the, the tile that actually says something. Oh, that's great. What do those say? Do you remember? It says the wraith. This one says wraith. This one says... Hey. That's a little puppy. Dog's puppy. Aww. Uh, the wraith and and uh, oh, what what is what is uh, maybe the Ashley's brat? Nickname. The brat. brat. The brat. Yeah, yeah. brat. But the right. idea we had a bag like this. Okay. Okay. And so, if I'm going to stick my arm in here, it's only going to go so way. Yeah. Cut the bottom out and just and just keep it up here. Right. And get in an angle where we just paint out her arm. Okay. That that was the, the approach. And initially, at one point, I had like, but then she had to reach down and pull out the amount, the right amount, and the right words. Right. And then we had a little bowl right next to her. Oh. <laughs> she would reach in like this. She'd reach in, pull out. Okay. The the tiles and and, and pitch them on the table. That was the start of it, and then it's just got. Then you could do any angle. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh. Anyway, uh, sorry. That that's kind of that is the way we did it. That's and, that's cool. And then you had the lights going a, too whenever she reached in. A practical yeah. way of doing it, and we had to light this because it was purple, and it's really hard to get this color and, right. and get get the technique as you can see against my shirt. Yeah. Kind of disappear, so we'd have to always have a little special light. To rim it, and uh, and later in the show, she because she had purple hair. She also had purple pants. I remember one time she had purple pants and went, "We'll never see." We'll never see. Yeah. We can't do this. So we had to figure out a way, a camera angle. Yeah, it was always something like that. But um, and then it was uh, 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 Jakara. She actually came up with one of the ways was to put another bag within a bag. Oh really? Yeah, and she would start with a bag and push the bag down out of the way, 
yeah, there's, there's a couple of those that we'd have to paint that out. Okay. And, 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 uh, she could, she could come up with, the uh, with the tiles already yeah. ready to go. Um, yeah, uh, um, I'm surprised people actually, that's something that people actually like in the show. Oh, it's fantastic. Because it, it goes by and then you go, wait a minute, what, what just happened? The first time that happened, you know, I, I'm watching and I was like, oh, she's going to put her arm in the bag. Okay. You know, and then it disappears and you're like, oh, oh did that I just looks see great. That? You know, <laughs> like, you know, that, you know and, and again, I was because because you could tell the bridge was physical. You could tell it was done practically and. Because you can tell these things, even though graph, you know, graphics and visual effects, digital effects have gotten so well, you can tell when things yeah. are real or not. And yeah. I was like, that just looks real. That's got to be real. So I definitely wanted to ask you, you know, about that. And what's interesting is, I know, like you said, you have to light the bag and everything, and it's everything looks different in camera than it does in real life, which is which right. which works, but at the same time, you know, you have to account for. It. But it it is interesting because you know we've done a. Yeah. you know our fair of shooting things in light ha but yeah it, it's so interesting how things look so different on camera and in real life you're like that'll never work but on camera it works perfect you know i just i love that type of stuff um so um what about uh we mentioned manx earlier and you mentioned his his makeup yeah. um did you work on any of his transformation because that's that's another okay. thing in the show that just it was, was phenomenal. absolute seamless yeah. like i'm like that that's got to be the most seamless you know especially in the last episode yeah where he goes from what a hundred years difference uh, in a matter of yeah in a matter of seconds, um, it, it just always looked. I mean, that's one of yeah, the big the, things. So that was that something always... that you also worked on? Oh yeah, no, there was uh, it was in show one oh six, first one, mm -hmm. uh, and then the last one, and there's one in the middle. There's with, one a little with, bit early on, actually, wasn't there? Yeah, the first the first one was. In front uh, of the wraith, there was. It was shows up Jolene. Oh yes, yes, yes. And uh, yeah, the, the 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 gag there. Th this is it's really complicated. I, I knew no other way to do it uh, other than a lot of rehearsal mm -hmm. to try to get poses. But but Zach Quinto and and uh, have to uh, you know hats off to to Joel. Uh, Harlow for his his incredible makeup because it it stood out on its own when he was 105 years old. Wow. Um, he was uh, he could he could be in daylight, you know. It worked. Yeah. So we had to pick like, what do you want to do first? We want to start the scene and production wise, if we're shooting you know the actual show, it we can get more done shooting him in, in the old age makeup. So when he goes all the way out and he leaves the car and he finally goes oh, right. uh, and comes comes out of the of the garage, uh, I mean, this this type of effect goes back for me to American Werewolf in London, uh -huh. where the whole process should be painful. Right. If if your bones are reshaping or getting old or getting young, mm -hmm. it, it can't be non-painful and so you have to be able to get into a that hurt and you, you have to remember with zach it was funny so he has to remember like when he does this yeah <laughs> but there was a rhythm he he worked it out and he goes okay oh, i'm he gonna was, do, he was fantastic. When he this i'm gonna do this i'm gonna yeah. do a few and then when i come back the following day at 30 years old or i have to do the same thing yeah <laughs> similar as, as close as we right, can right and then we have to track that and he had little green dots on his face right so he he was doing the, he was doing the move practical so everything around him is real mm -hmm. he's real and we just did uh you know dissolve uh, his character from younger character to that and we had and then previously had to shoot with joel zach and makeup one two three four and five right where he's at different ages so we had that uh we had we had completely done digital scans of his face in five different makeups right and um and then those were tracked on as as he would go from you know he'd say okay when we cut away to ashley or somebody reacting he's going from five to three or right. Three to two, or two to four. I mean, it was, it, 
where where that you could see a change. Yeah. And but it, and then it was still it was animated and it was it was physically animated. Yeah. Um, same thing with his hands and his the wrinkles. So but but the big the biggest the biggest uh, uh, thing to overcome in this was when he was going from young to uh, old to young, his hair would have to grow. Yeah. And we thought, wait a minute. That's going to look weird. It's just like little stumps and stubbles and right. grow. Or if he's going from old to young, does it fall out? Yeah, yeah, you've done both. You did it both. Well, we kind of, no, we, we, we jumped past a piece of that to cut away to somebody where you didn't have to see. Right, you didn't have to see the one part. Right, right. Or a loss. Yeah. yeah. Thin out, but you never saw it really. Come, come back, out. right, yeah. It true. came back at, true, because true, true. it really looks strange. It looks weird, yeah. It <laughs> yeah, was like. Yeah. Yeah. It looked like a mistake. It, yeah. Actually, similar to American Wealth in London, when when the hair starts to grow, you'd have to have that bristling, gr- yeah. growing thing, or even or even like you know like Teen Wolf or something, right? It'd have to have the have, how it would grow out. But no, yeah, I mean, cool. then it was practical, and you would reverse, you would pull it through right. through rubber skin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, but but the, you know that was that that That's, era. Yeah. But digitally yeah. now you could do almost anything. So so when when he was, I said the, the then the first thing I know I thought since we were at, at the first trans. Formation was at night. Was that I mean, the one thing for me? Is his hair should like turn a, turn white. Mm-hmm. You'll that's the one thing you could see. Yeah. So when he's moving around, it's like, what are you gonna are you gonna see wrinkle? I don't know. So when we, because he was in a, it was in a night scene, the first transformation, lit backlit by the by the wraith. His hair starts to you know starts to get you know white patches or streaks in his hair. And you, so you notice something happening, and then his acting is is telling you it's it's painful. And then we, as we, you know, do you know, cut away and then come to a closer shot, you start to get the detail of what's happening in his face. Yeah. yeah. And uh, but the issue well, on the very last of the of the one where he's at the race and he's trying to and Ashley's there, you know, as a ghost right. looking at him. Um, he had all these green dots all over his face, and it's like. Do we stop to take the dots off? <laughs> and because of the digital era, it's like, well, paint them out. Yeah, <laughs> he yeah. went through the whole se- sequence after that yeah. with green dots on his face. Oh, really? Just finish oh. it? Yeah, might as well, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I guess it's at this point it's so easy. Yeah. But that's actually a really good transition for our next question. Yeah. yeah. Um, actually, a perfect transition, right? Uh, can you talk about incorporating the actors uh, into your visual effects? So I mean, you, you, all right. So now we know how Zachary worked that with that. But like, say the bridge, or even in even, even in the, Bing, the, the tunnels, uh, showing up Bing, at the yeah. gates for the first time, and those kind of things. Yeah. So so yeah. How is it to incorporate like when you bring these well, actors well, in? One, <clears throat> um, <clears throat> basically, it was uh, Bing showing up at the gates. Those were the real gates. Yeah. So yeah. So, That's easy. Uh, yeah. The, that that was fairly simple, but but you know there were, there, we had to put in snow. We had some sort of fake snow, uh, movie snow happening, and then uh, uh, I guess driving in the car. <clears throat> in the car, we were on a green screen stage. There was no background, no st- and no. Oh, this is the other thing. Yeah, uh, Saint Nick's Highway. There's no yeah. background. There was no 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 snow, no um, no practical snowmen. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, the very first time we did we 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 did the car with the actors in the car, like how do we do this to make it look? You know what's outside? Mm-hmm. We're gonna have to reflect what's outside in the windows, but we don't know what's outside. Ugh. And so uh, Kari Scoglin, uh, on the first show, uh, was when we we I think we first started our uh, doing snow on the car, the car in the snow driving. Uh, we, um, I remember I lived in Montreal. I did the movie heavy metal and I lived in Montreal for two years and, uh, snow in Canada, way different. <laughs> <laughs> and it's man. So, so when we had a, uh, Cana- uh, the Canadian effects house doing the snow, it's like, look, go outside. What does the snow look packed on the windows? <laughs> and we started playing with that. Yeah. Yeah. 
And how much of this can we get on there? We're going to have to have wipers going. Oh, the wipers are my favorite part. It's just it's uh, little okay. sticks. Are, it's little we're sticks. We're making weird noise. Yeah. And it's like, take the wipers off. The wipers are now going to have to be digital. digital right, yeah. <laughs> and because we don't know the rhythm. And once we, we, we you edit, you, you get a cut together, then the, the, the wipers are going to be out of sync. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And at the same time, we were figure, trying to figure out what is... Chris, what does the St. Nick's Highway look like? And and that was done entirely digital. And uh, that took quite a while to build. But uh, and then the last the last thing for oh, across the show of the car and Chris, uh, on the way to Christmas Land was reflecting back into the into the glass the three dimensional volume of the highway and the mountains and the trees and the snow. Right. Yeah. Uh, I know I got a little off. No, that's perfectly uh, fine. But, but uh, uh, Ashley, actors with an effect, she has a red eye. Yeah. Uh, that started, uh, everybody had different opinions than the producer in. Like, like uh, Jamie thought that there was too much blood. Like she put in a contact yeah. and okay. it put blood in her eye. Yeah. And after each... Each time we started getting shots back, it's like, is that too much? Is that that's not enough. That oh, oh, that don't look good. That looks scary. That looks like that looks like she's she couldn't she couldn't even walk if it looked like that. Mm-hmm. And there was a, and there was a there it actually had to paint out and reduce the amount of blood and and red and dry or add to it to yeah. match the entire scene across sequences across each show. Right. We were playing with it a lot. Um, nail gun. That was fun. Um, Tell us about that. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, there were, that was the, the simplest way. Again, practical. Uh, Joel, we put a nail gun. We put a put a wound and a nail gun. A nail in yeah. his, on the actor. Yeah. He's acting with that there, and 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 until the moment you need to hit him, it's uh, it's painted it's, out. Yeah. We right. had to yeah. go back, paint it wow. out. Yeah. Move it. <laughs> yeah. So when it's there, it's there. Yeah, there's no stopping again production. There's no stopping production. It's like okay, we're about to shoot, hit him with the nail gun. Okay, let everybody take 20 minutes. Go away and put that. Yeah. Put it on. It's like not in TV, not in production. No, you got to keep moving. Yeah. He's gonna have, we're we're, yeah. Mo- we're shooting through this. He's got already got it. And uh, how? And how? You you bring up a good point. How seamless? No, no, maybe that's not what I'm gonna say. Was it as easy? Because remember the old saying, you know, we'll fix it in post. We'll fix it in post, right? That's essentially what you guys were saying here. And you're like, oh, we'll paint it out. We'll paint it out. Was were there any? Was that ever an issue for you? Were you ever like, well, we, you know, budget wise, or just, well, I don't know if we, you know, if we can get that done in time, or was the was the the hey, you know, we'll paint it out afterwards. Was that always like a va- a viable go to? Well, that's. There, there's, there's always steps in production because there's a lot of pressure. Like we, ne- we never budgeted to do this. We never it's like, well, how could you? Because the script, you know, you, yeah. you know, the scripts aren't written yet. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we never, you know, there's a certain cost, like to the bridge, certain cost to the bridge every time you go to the bridge. That Jamie brought up one day. She goes, you know, every time we go there, it costs this much money. I said, <laughs> well, what it would have cost if the bridge wasn't there. Right, right, right. That perspective. I mean, how many cuts you have? I mean, yeah. Um, yeah. So, um, but there's always this. You know, they're always saying, "Well, you know, we're a little bit over on this show, and, and you know, if we can be under on this one, it's like, well, the only way I know to do this and keep, for example, the nail is just it's on his head, and we have to paint it out. Right. And then the producer will go, "Okay, let's go. Okay, <laughs> let's keep going. Yeah. Keep this. Keep this machine going." Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, what the, what, you know, a show like Game of Thrones, I mean, those guys, that's a full on full live yeah. action feature. Yeah. They just go, you know, they know they're whatever it's going to take. That's yeah, just, do. just do but it. But this was it right. yeah. first, a first series. You know, how are we going to make it work? Um, the, uh, we never, we never really got, I don't think we saw the bridge complete example for, we're maybe in the show four right. or five, and then we started to see the bridge, and it's like, oh, okay, 
So we're continuing to do this. <laughs> I did have some paintings done, and, and when we, when we go out to shoot the bridge at night, and this was on show was like number nine. You know, wow. I said, "Here's the painting yeah. from Cosa um, or uh, Mavericks, I forget which company." And I would give, I would use the illustration. I'd give that to the, our DP, yeah. who was Marvin Rush at the time, at, by then. And um, you know, the moon's over here. We, you know, we, I can, you know, do we put some shimmer on the water? Um, there's a lot of things to discuss when lighting it, and then we kind of knew what it's going to look like. Yeah. But by then, it looked every once in a while. I say, look, looks like the illustrations. Remember the illustrations? Oh, yeah, it's cool. Yeah. Um, but nobody, but everybody thinks it's there. <laughs> um, what was some of the others? I'm trying to remember some of the other stuff. It's, it's a lot of uh, make makeup. Oh, uh, this is. This is bizarre to me. The, when when uh, when Vic traveled across the bridge to find finds the the dead mom, mm -hmm. Haley's mom, Sharon. I think so. Sharon. Yeah, I think yeah. it was Sharon. Uh, yeah. So we were in this string, really weird field, and that's where we had, and the bridge was just a frame at that point because they didn't know where the bridge went, and that's the only time you see the bridge extend. Right. Tree line. Looks like it extends a couple of feet, and then we we digitally moved the moved the trees forward. Oh, wow. well, there wasn't so much of the bridge because it's a big crane shot, so that's a huge 3D shot. Yeah, yeah. and so Vic comes up, stops. Um, there were some crows. This is a production thing. Like, all right, there's some crows. That's how she sees there's something going on. There's birds around this where, where the where the, the grape. Yeah, and. Um, and it was one of the one of the producers. So we, I had some some crows brought in. And we did this little dance for a light. Like here's what the crows look like. Yeah. And instead of, and in order to save costs, we did a reflection of the crows in her face mask. Yeah. The low res version of the shot. Oh. <laughs> instead of a high res version of the. Okay. The that works. Crows, eh? Jumping around and flying away. You see yeah. the crows. You hear them. You see them fly away in her mask. Yeah. She takes the helmet off. Yeah. That was an actress in in a grave. Um for real. <laughs> so first I thought, is this gonna be like, we're gonna have like a you know, a a a, a, a maquette or or a, or a you know, some sort of uh makeup uh double. Right. You know, rubber, rubber version of of, mm -hmm. of an actor or the actress in the in the dirt. It was the real the real actress, and 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 we and, and once we got the shot, and we did this because it was a crane shot. It's yeah, like, she wow. was in the dirt. What yeah, are, she's in there, and so they heated the dirt. They put a put a heating blanket in there. We did all this stuff to because we shot it late at, towards the end of the day, and and there's a real a real actress in there and wow. covered her face up, and then she's wiping, you know, stuff off her face. Wow, like, it it looks like a rubber mannequin. Like, what do we do? We have, this is a real person. We got to do so. And we kept working on it to make it try to look real. But it was so, because the assumption when you first saw that was, oh, that's, that's not a real person. Right. Yeah. But it was. Wow. <laughs> that's how good the makeup was. Yeah. Kudos, kudos, kudos to her. Amazing. I never heard that before. Yeah. That's crazy. Wow. That's fantastic. That is. That is. This show, I mean, yeah, this, this, oh man, that it's so great to hear these things. We love to hear these things because you see these shots and they come out so well, but the stories behind them are, are just as fascinating yeah. as what they look like. Go watch part two of this interview where John talks about his awesome work on the Ghostbusters, The Abyss, and other amazing classic films from the 80s and 90s.